Buongiorno. Good morning to you all. Good morning to those who are here at the Sala de Colonne at Cagiostinian, to those who are following us remotely. We thought we might open this press conference of dance, music, and theatre with joy after two years where wonderful festivals were held despite COVID. But unfortunately, the script of our lives lead us to opening this press conference at another very complicated time for the world. The Biennale has always been a place for cultural democracy, a, pla a diplomacy uh, uh, where contributions are given through dialogue. But this time, it won't be easy to manage a dialogue between those uh, who attack and those who are attacked. The Pavilion of Ukraine will be present. Uh, the Biennale has supported their presence. I'm talking about uh, Biennale Arte. And the Russian Pavilion was uh, shut down because of the desire of the artists and uh, the uh, curator. We are now here to talk about dance, music, and theater. It is some kind of debut, if I may say so, for artistic directors who last year tried out at the time of COVID, but they are actually carrying out a debut because they are presenting their choices uh, in a full regime, and this is uh, what we are working at at the moment. When I first met the three directors, uh, Gianni Forte, Stefano Ricci for theatre, Ian McGregor for dance, and Lucia Ronchetti for music, we had made a promise. Indeed, we had promised uh, to bring forth uh, the financial contribution and the possibility to attach greater visibility to the uh, decisions um, and choices made by the directors. And this year, uh, this promise is going to be held, and even more so next year. Among the extraordinary activities that I have inherited from my predecessors, so there's the Biennale College. As you know, Biennale Colleges are open up to young artists who already know that they are artists in the different disciplines that they have chosen for themselves. But Biennale College is an extraordinary opportunity for these young artists to work um, under the leadership of the artistic directors. These youths come from the world over. Many of these youths, thanks to the Biennale College, found new jobs. And many of them saw their work performed at the Biennale. I'd like to thank the artistic directors, because they turned Biennale College into the true heart of their work here. Let me announce now very briefly and welcome the Golden Lions, Christian Dietari for theater, Sakura de Gigavara for dance, Giorgio Battistelli for music, and the, gold, and the Silver Lions, Samira Legor for theater, Roche, uh, Rocio Molina for dance, uh, and Ars Ludi for music. This is a great large family that is opening up year on year, further enriching the great heritage of the historical archives of contemporary arts. Activities uh, uh, from where artistic directors uh, draw a lot. So, and this is something that we have shared also and disseminated thoroughly so that uh, to, um, uh, promoting interdisciplinary dialogue. One example uh, is the installation that we had at Forte Marghera that was conceived by um, theatre director Damiano Micheletto. They're joining together, pulling together theatre, music, figurative arts in a sensory experience that doesn't draw from digital technologies that are certainly more than welcome at Biennale when appropriate but promote and uh, stimulate uh, some of our senses, such, such as uh, uh, touch, hearing, sight, in a very, enthusiast in the very enthusiastic um, journey that we are all invited to follow. I'd like to give the floor now to the first directors of Ricci Forte for Theatre. I'd like to thank the Ministry for Culture, RAI, media partner for all the 
all the activities of Biennale, and then uh, Bottega Veneta as for dance. Uh, having said as much, I'd like to give the floor now to the two directors uh, for uh, theatre. Doch wenn ich nicht weiter weiß, dann lausch ich heimlich der Musik und summe leis. Good morning to you all. This is our second year, and we're going to tell you about Biennale Teatro. We're going to inquire after where theatre is going at a time of barbarism and uh, feeling lost. We are telling about the possibility of a journey, uh, a discussion between poet. Uh, poetry and aesthetics are trying to find something that we can share. Our world is at fire. This is our daily show. Relationships, geographies, certainties, everything is exploding, finding a new definition. It is a planet that is now uh, witnessing a process of deterioration and deafness that have accompanied us over years uh, with the lack of willingness to listen to one another, with the obstinacy trying to be right at all times and uh, telling off others for their mistakes. losing one's dignity. This has been an ongoing uh, set of uh, signs uh, without ever being aware, without ever questioning um, personally and professionally oneself. Uh, uh, last year, with Blue, we have uh, tried and suggested the awakening of the torpor after the ice a of the embargo on ourselves, uh, thanks uh, to the support of memory of what was withstanding of uh, tracks of uh, digital uh, footprints uh, to find our um, position back. The willingness, uh, the um, de the fragility of yesterday in the light of reappropriation of oxygen and distance uh, today become an action of uh, subversiveness, uh, bearing witness uh, to the willingness to act. This year, the color of the warp is red. And red is not just considered as a passion or seduction, but rather it is uh, um, cons to be considered as a scratching action, tear as uh, brought about by an effort. Rot in German, we thought it, it sounded better to represent the soul of this uh, uh, festival that is uh, um, with teeth 
to testify to this um, present. Uh, iconoplasm is the blood uh, that um, fills our veins. Rot is uh, to be understood not as top, but rather as, as an aware action and militant uh, resistance. Rot uh, um, is uh, something that go against the herd uh, false idols. It is uh, the wounded animal that explodes with its magnificence in opposing all the above. The boundaries, uh, nationalism, uh, viral corruptions uh, still hinge in our fibers. And it is perhaps uh, through the listening of what is other by from us, uh, that imperceptible movement that is uh, uh, little known uh, towards the unknown uh, that can uh, trigger a process towards liberty, liberty to be curious, liberty to be different. In the light of this, going back to one's own stance, uh, Uh, there's uh, something that we have to bear witness to. Culture and art uh, seem to have come up to a failure uh, that we're uh, unable to uh, follow up on what is happening. Is this the future of ourselves as men and as artists? Uh, do we have to slide on uh, events uh, as uh, drops of water on the glass uh, just being con concerning on our salary? Jaspers, uh, I firmly believe that, that, that no prognosis uh, is harmless. Be that false and true, it changes into an act of contemplation to an invitation to act. Here we are again, animals that once and once back wounded by uh, the pandemics, uh, by the tears and, uh, and cries uh, of war that is so close to, our, to us. Uh, We are now back to our festival and to its name, to rot treatments are not drug therapy that include the revitalization of interest for environmental uh, stimuli leading people to um, relate to one another, another reorienting the confounded uh, patient vis-a-vis -vis the time he or she uh, is living. As for Biennale 2022, we are starting for this rehabilitation action, ROT, with its infinite variations uh, to um, track the um, thread of our lives, uh, to find back the humanity that uh, I didn't needs a new lifeblood, uh, and uh, to Uh, try and share our intentions. We have to break the enchantment uh, according to which everybody is isolated and in a silence. To try and establish links uh, with uh, the um, National Academy Silvio D'Amico uh, and the Piccolo Teatro in Milan. These two major institutions uh, are cooperating with the different projects that we're going to name soon. Rot is you, rot is your body, but you have forgotten that. There's a purpose of reappropriation which we want to trigger by means of blood that um, shows up a skeleton that pointing out the direction to follow, which is powerful and simple. Movement. Movement uh, is uh, the key to interpret uh, this impasse, uh, this uh, apathy that doesn't create uh, any um, shaking in our stagnation. There's a movement uh, that um, takes us back to the first hinge, which is our body. Our body and rot is one that has to take away its skin to become a tool to listen to the world, um, a dowsing tool to measure the, world, the planet to uh, detect uh, the movement. The bodies of Jatayi, the golden lion for this year, um, are looking for uh, twin souls with lingering now. They tell about a uh, um, body that has no homeland, that is a suspended, that is migrant, and that tries to go back home despite the exile, uh, prohibiting any movement. Uh, the bodies of Brooke um, um, pant uh, um, endlessly to try and uh, fill up the vacuum and uh, give rise to a body in a, um, all eating up structure. The limbs are by Rao um, that are shaken up and uh, 
lonely, tell us about this migration to what is this different by means of a social investigation. They reveal the fear of our bodies. Um, this is a harshness to, to which the nostalgic bodies of the Florian Tagliarini are, over, are opposed. They uh, travel on a body that is different, that has a fear to find ourselves as unknown with this nostalgia of having missed an option. With Pippin Tom and Triptych, um, we look at the subconscious and that placates in the dream of uh, metamorphic um, structures by Miss Yaya that has been awarded a prize. And uh, he's uh, opening up a new tool with innovative uh, outlook, that of the um, gold rush. Uh, Selmira Elagots, um, Silver Lion, explores uh, uh, his body. The sexual life has been um, in studied. And, uh, the, and it converse uh, with uh, the inorganic men of Belova, Jacobelli, that um, work through uh, um, and Diana Ross. Diana Ross um, identifies uh, the skin um, opposing uh, the battle of uh, senses. Uh, the American Latvian director um, comes up with a sarcasm to get to the indecent um, hypertrophism of uh, I, Antoine Naufmanas, uh, who finds uh, repercussions in the voice of Aine Nakamura, whom we are going to um, refer to soon. So, Rot. Therapy. It is uh, bodies and organs uh, as exposed in blisters. Uh, we want to become owners of our meaning. Blood flows, estuaries of red. We were going to overcome the boundaries of a festival, overcoming the codes. Uh, so not just theater, but many potential theaters uh, overflowing uh, the grammar of meaning. Among the different theaters that are possible, there is something totally and brand new, and that is the drama project um, Late Hour Scratching Poetry. Our certainty will in Italy are rediscussed and questioned, but what we are losing sight of is the possibility to dream and have vision to transform our own lives uh, in our performance, uh, in our eternal embrace. And Alda Marini and uh, her poetic voice um, is key. Her voice, Alda Marini's voice, with her texts of uh, uh, daily poetry, a uh, small group of uh, um, female actresses uh, are going to voice and give voice um, to the fragments, uh, a different breathe, a renewed uh, appointment that is repeated at sunset, day after day, to listen to to uh, come to terms with the outlook, to freeze the objective vision, and behind our eyelids uh, to um, be led by the light of Anna Marie Aldamerini. Some kind of eco Doppler uh, showing our uh, innocence. Late hour stretching poetry is a, a poetry, including a mise en lecture of a, a work by Alda Merini, La Pazza della Porta Canto, and she, uh, is going to present also new artists. There's an, a she artist that breaks the identity portrait to do away with it altogether with harshness um, devoid of any self-complacency. Asia Argento is going uh, to be the presenter of uh, uh, this event uh, with a voice, heart, and limbs uh, that we've seen uh, shaking and uh, redesigning in so much international cinema. 
we're going to cooperate with a long-lasting institution in theater, the Academia Nazionale d'Arte Dramatica, Silvio Dramatica, who is going to be the muse of this fresco, starting with the artist who is going to trigger this project, Galatea Ranzi, one of the representative of theater and cinema that brights more fully. And uh, she is going to celebrate the different steps, choosing a different uh, actor, a multitude of women who are going to make up the theater of tomorrow, and that all were trained at the same institution. To conclude the festival, there's going to be the rarefied soul of Sonia Bergamasco, a rigorous actor, and uh, um, a bright start of our um, stages and she's going to be uh, uh, the uh, lead of the evening. Then there's going to be the manly presence of Demetrio Castellucci with a sound sensibility that was developed in his family and that was further, further nourished with professional experience. Uh, he's going to suspend the time of word, leaving sound in habit, body, and vice versa in stupor. Then to go towards a DJ platform a banquet, transforming um, astonishment into celebration to find that dimension of staying together, glorifying our real daily lives. Letting that, uh, or leaving the feminine and masculine, uh, blurring the borders toward a gender multiform word, outlining the willingness for peace, freedom, vis-a-vis um, -vis the differences. Rot, to conclude, tells us about the edge. On the one hand, uh, the, um, the fragility of a different dimension. On the other side, uh, um, the impossibility to do a w without that. We have to rethink, to learn to rethink, to learn to react. Rot has to be a spark triggering movement not to be seduced by this willingness to go back to what is normal, which is a bit of a paradox for uh, our theater. Rot implies embracing doubt, revolution, change. Rot uh, is synonymous with you, your awakening. Rot is the agora. It is the community to be reinvented with your own hands. Because as Lincoln was, we used to say, the best way to anticipate future is creating it. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. The Biennale Teatro 2022 uh, is wrote, and uh, it will uh, find a map to be the spine of an adult and responsible thought that will nurture the inextinguishable fire of our need of differences. So with independence and related with our roots, with ourselves, with our dreams, all that makes us uh, human beings. Also, this uh, edition of uh, the Biennale College will be focused uh, on uh, transmission. Uh, um, we shall highlight our commitment to underline the importance of scouting a new, um, a new galaxy of young directors, authors, and uh, performers uh, who will uh, um, conceive uh, site-specific uh, events. Uh, they will uh, use uh, their uh, own unsuspecting uh, resources and uh, will uh, discover their own essence for a pacifist um, competition. So the Biennale College will be a forge to support new creators, new artists, the bricoleurs, according to Deleuze, in order 
to define new ways out, focus on horizons that cannot be perceived with a, a naked eye, and uh, uh, understand that the uh, continuously mutating world. So the authors, the under 40 authors, will be uh, led by Davide Carnevale, and we shall uh, schedule a, a seven uh, master classes. We shall have uh, Milorau, Porchedo, Carnevale, Tagliarini de Florian, um, Rosetta Cocchier, and uh, Francesca Dotto. Rosetta Cook here, Ron Howell, and uh, Carlos Patrice, who has uh, uh, co founded the Fura del Baus, will focus on a physical uh, theater uh, in order to support those who are afraid of flying in any uh, sense. So the universes of their specific languages, inquiring into the boundary territories uh, between real, uh, what is real and what is unreal, and uh, uh, cancelling the uh, ordinary vision and helping them to identify what is unknown, what is invisible. As far as, uh, as uh, the uh, college calls for site-specific uh, projects, uh, Aine Nakamura, who is uh, a, an American and Japanese uh, artist, and uh, Antoine Neufmars have uh, won the performance site-specific uh, call. We had uh, received the 700 uh, um, uh, submissions um, and uh, Antoine Neufmar leaves uh, apart uh, the traditional Western uh, sounds and will uh, put us within a poetical vortex which uh, gives rise to continue to relations that are in continuous relation with his own personal past and the present where dramatic events of history such as wars, invasions uh, and unrooting uh, and the loss of uh, one's own homeland are intertwined uh, with uh, uh, the life of those who are exiled. And, uh, and uh, uh, Nakamura will be an hypnotic uh, um, uh, character who will enchant uh, everyone uh, as uh, the creators, uh, uh, creatures uh, of authors uh, such as Kawabaka, and uh, uh, she will uh, tell uh, stories that she disapproves, and she will refuse compromises uh, and will oppose any um, social uh, possible um, limit. And uh, Antoine Neufmar uh, uh, wonders what will our identity be without uh, uh, memories if uh, these uh, prints were uh, cancelled all of a sudden, what should we do to rise again onto the surface? And the memory helps us, and uh, uh, it marks uh, um, uh, the uh, triggering of uh, an existential um, experience. So all that is based upon an FMAS personal experience, that is uh, to say, and as me, uh, because uh, uh, of COVID, he will establish a one-to-one -one relation with someone from uh, the audience, and he will um, share memories with an unknown passenger from the audience, and uh, he will uh, uh, guide the unknown uh, character, the unknown person uh, um, through um, 
codes uh, that will be rediscovered and uh, will unveil his or her desires, uh, sexuality, and needs uh, that he or she has never expressed. So uh, something about uh, Christian Jatai, golden lion, who has carefully observed the cruelty of our world. The Brazilian director has a strengthened an original language, joining her uh, di poetic dimension and uh, the just position of a political um, mark, uh, looking uh, between the past and the present, uh, she um, cancels the uh, traditional rules and uh, orchestrates a, a dance uh, between her uh, person characters and each member of the audience. She will launch very powerful images using uh, the contact with the audience, and uh, she will use cameras as an integral part of uh, the uh, scene, as uh, Casavetes uh, did. She will be a militant uh, spokesperson uh, showing uh, the scars of her own country, Brazil, and uh, will show the um, uh, fight against the pressure, uh, pressures against uh, women. Uh, and uh, will fight uh, uh, any limitation in the uh, social and artistic uh, field. She will speak of a fascism that doesn't define itself as such and uh, uh, will uh, show uh, the lack of respect. The silver lion, uh, Samira Lagos, uh, shows the body and uh, shows uh, the um, uh, multifaceted uh, um, body and uh, focuses on uh, solitude and uh, um, human relations and uh, explores porous boundaries. It is a poetic uh, travel within uh, the body, which is uh, an instrument uh, and of uh, artistic experimentation. He will uh, show the manipulation of uh, bodies with his camera and uh, using himself, uh, using his own uh, personal experiences in the framework of cinema uh, experiences in order to experiment uh, the strength uh, his uh, sexuality as a transgender and uh, providing us uh, with uh, a unique reportage uh, performance. And uh, last but not least, uh, we shall organize also a round table, a symposium uh, with the leading uh, and authoritative personalities of uh, uh, this sector, being, not being, or being elsewhere is uh, uh, the title. And almost all our artists of this uh, uh, edition of the uh, theater uh, festival will be involved. We shall renew the concepts of uh, reinterpretation, and we shall ask uh, questions about presence and absence, materialization or disappearance of uh, the body on stage. And uh, the audience uh, becomes uh, the active protagonist of uh, doubt sharing. So the presence of uh, the um, stage body and the representation through our other uh, media. And uh, the winners of uh, the uh, college call of last uh, year are Giacomo Garafoni and uh, Toya Djokovic um, with uh, two different uh, works, Toya Djokovic with uh, an abim 
and uh, this uh, will be staged in collaboration with the Piccolo Teatro di Milano, Teatro d'Europa. Giacomo Garafoni has inflamed uh, imaginazione with uh, his Veronica, and uh, it is uh, still possible to go into this uh, new imagination uh, by crossing uh, unusual doors. Uh, Veronica, his uh, um, text is an allergy of uh, today's word. Uh, he will invent uh, a, um, an array of bodies and uh, will lead to a um, collective uh, uh, fresco of a contemporary tragedy. Uh, by uh, in hybridization of uh, the uh, contemporary worlds and uh, expressive uh, uh, forms. Uh, Tolia Djokovic is also a, a scriptwriter and a director. And with uh, an abeam, uh, she um, uh, focused on uh, blue, the image of last year's edition. That is to say, the immersion within ourselves. And and uh, it will be possible, uh, she will show the meanders of uh, perception by traveling with a probe, uh, because it is necessary to do so. And uh, she will uh, give light to all that we did know about ourselves and will illustrate the real with uh, a, a drastic effect of uh, uh, the structure and that appears uh, and uh, she will uh, focus on the BBC Challenger and the work of uh, uh, director Gypsy uh, Cameron and uh, the um, body of the protagonist involving also a camera, which will record the ocean depression of uh, life surrounding us and despite us. And we, the readers, uh, the audience, uh, will uh, go around the parameters of a known existence and will light uh, um, the uh, unknown, uh, uh, unknown spaces and uh, unknown uh, characteristics of ourselves. Picasso used to say that paintings are not meant to be uh, used as objects and decorator walls. He said that paintings are useful war weapons. And Guernica is uh, a clear example of this. The um, cries uh, of uh, children and uh, uh, human beings in general uh, uh, being uh, uh, destroyed by the war. Um, are an example. So I uh, uh, give you the words uh, uh, of a poet whom I uh, like very much, whom I love. Uh, and the words of poets can awake uh, uh, human beings within human beings. They have a, a revolutionary strength in order to unmask the horrors and the devastation of uh, today's butchers. Eugenio Montale, uh, I'm going to quote, all uh, contemporary isms uh, are uh, no, really um, unbearable. I am ready to make a revolution every day within myself, but outside, I uh, prefer not to be poisoned and not to be beaten. And uh, ourselves, uh, we cannot uh, um, do things uh, by ourselves. But uh, we, if uh, we join forces uh, and uh, with all that uh, screams within ourselves, uh, we shall be able to protest uh, vigorously altogether. We should no longer accept, uh, we must no longer accept a war in the 21st century. Uh, there are currently 59 wars in the world, and we keep speaking of of gas supplies to Europe. Thank you. Thank you to Stefano and Gianni. 
I'd like to invite Wayne McGregor to join us on stage. And while he does so, we'd like to show you a video on dance. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's with great pleasure that we're here today to introduce you to our 16th International Festival for Contemporary Dance with a the theme, Boundaryless. Dance has always been the most collaborative of art forms. We work through and with other bodies in a seamless dialogue of mind and matter. Often, we don't even speak. We allow the core of us to radiate and instinctively start to move, to music, to images, to feelings, to impulses, to touch, to inputs that stream in from a myriad of sources and resonate inside us, inspiring us to create. Mostly, we do not remember where an idea starts or where an idea ends. We are all continuum and exchange, morph and transformation a borderless vessel of exploration and potential. Our bodies, too, are transmutable more than ever before as we extend ourselves into virtual worlds, transform ourselves through meditation, or simply teleport for a while in the metaverse, this fantastical world where everything is possible, kind of. Today, physical borders are eroding as quickly as geographical borders are being redrawn. And still, the human spirit transcends itself over and again towards a permanent state of the unfixed, the impenetrable, the free. What is it today, then, for an artist or an artwork to be boundaryless? Is it expressed in the people we choose to collaborate with? Uh, the mediums we, we innovate inside, from where we work, or in the attempts to erode the categories that define us, or is it something other? Isn't art making the very act of breaking boundaries and subverting barriers? Isn't it a way of reimagination and a new way of thinking? So art then perhaps the liminal space of the in-betweens? This year, we have five strands to our program of Biennale Dancer 2022. We have live and installation work, the Biennale College, collaborations, films, and talks and workshops. 
All of the work and artists in our second year are in many, year, in many ways uncategorizable. They all resist singular definition as they transcend genre and medium in their work. Radical collaboration is key to their practice as the spaces between art forms merge, coalesce, and transform into inspiring new directions. Their boundarylessness opens new channels of art making and presents audiences with fresh challenges of perception and interpretation. We are delighted to be commissioning and co-commissioning work this year for the festival. And actually we have nine world premieres, including from Saburo Teshigawara, Rosia Molina and Diego Totelli, and more. We have a co-production with Gauthier Dance, the dance company of the Theatre House Stuttgart, as well as presenting a European premiere and five Italian premieres from iconic dance world leaders to emerging innovative new voices. We'll be having and hosting 150 artists, all live in Venice, with 69 performances over 10 days. From the total theatre imagination of sculptor, dancer, designer, and artistic visionary, also our golden lion, Saburu Teshigawara, comes an intoxicating world premiere reimagining of a seminal ballet work, Russe work, Petrushka. Versioning this classically renowned narrative, Teshigawara searches for expression on the cusp of human agony and despair, inseparable from skin and flesh. Morphing between the feral, the sensuous, the upright, the parallel, the violent, and the tender, in an astonishing explosion of physical and creative energy, the mercurial contemporary flamenco dancer, Rossia Molina, our silver lion, stages a battle between her volcanic body and five live ecstatic musicians in her world premiere creation. Diego Tortelli, winner of the Biennale Dance's first call out for an Italian choreographic talent, impressed us with his questioning vision and restless curiosity. His imaginative proposal was for a brand new work, Phono, which takes us through the body via the throat for a sonic and visceral experiment in beatboxing, intricate dance, and identity politics. It's rare to experience seven top-tier auteur choreographers sharing one program of trailblazing dance, but that's exactly what we get with Gauthier Dance's new evening, The Seven Sins, at the Theatre Malibran. Azure Barton, Sidi Lau Bacekawi, Sharon Ayel, Marco Gurka, Marcus Moreau, Hoffe Schechter, and Sasha Voltz collaborate, inspired by their individual take on a mortal sin, an evening that promises that both to be transgressive and fiendish. Marugeku make intercultural indigenous dance theater from the Northwest Australian experience, where desert meets sea, Australia meets Asia, and where cultures twine and fuse. For Biennale Dancer 22, Dalisa Pigram and Rachel Swain's hard-hitting political work, Straight Talk, exposes Australia's shameful fixation with incarceration in a potent cry for change. Rudy Cole and Julia Roberts' burgeoning company, Humanhood, is making significant waves on the international dance scene, bringing together their shamanistic powers with their blurring somatic choreographic language. We're presenting their first full-length evening, Infinite, in Venice, where modern physics and Eastern mysticism fuse in the human body. Part performance, part meditation, Infinite completely upends our understanding of theatre-going experience, where here, audiences are invited into the infinity we all can contain within. Troubled but tough, unloved but unbowed, Maggie the Cat is a captivating focus in Tennessee Williams' Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Now, Trajel Harrell, the maverick contemporary artist and acclaimed choreographer, places Maggie at the center of this dazzling and provocative work of high art and popular culture. Maggie the Cat addresses the power, gender, rejection, and inclusion through the prism of one of theater's most celebrated characters. Whilst masterly timing and aesthetic flair, Harrell delights and surprises. 
In a breathtaking collaboration between MacArthur genius Korog Vakal Abraham, his company AIM, and pioneering electronic dance music legend Jaylin, Requiem, fire in, the earth of the, air, fire in the Air of the Earth, breathes startling new life into Mozart's Requiem in D minor. Drawing from a rich variety of physical genres, classical ballet, hip hop, modern dance, and street dance, Abraham challenges Jay Lynn to recast the iconic Mozart Requiem, which she does by building her sound on a style of house and street dance that originated in Chicago in the 1990s. For this new dialogue, a work emerges of great poignancy, leading us into an exploration of grief, turbulence, and importantly, rebirth. Developing our program of dance with inspirational life beyond the stage, we're evolving a series of work with artists who are looking at the intersections of body, technology, VR, AR, and AI for gallery experiences to be installations felt durationally by audiences. This year, the genre-bending artist Tobias Gremler, famed for his collaborations with pop sensation Bjork, presents a scenographic media installation, Collisions. Gremler's work, powered by kinetic forces, disrupts our perceptual system and trains us anew in dance appreciation. Virtual bodies, untethered spaces, celestial mechanics and air turbulences collide and intersect to reform physical presence and guide us to participate in fresh forms of beauty and dance poetry. Superstar virtual reality and real reality choreographer Blanca Lee will share her award-winning work La Balle de Paris again at the Biennale after winning Best VR Experience in the 78 Venice International Film Festival last year. This was an absolute must-have for me. It was an opportunity for our dance and our family audiences to participate in this extraordinary, visionary, multi-form work of boundary-breaking joy. Not only are you invited to the biggest ball in Paris, you get to dress up, dance yourself, and give in to a sensory and surreal adventure. It's really amazing. Indigo Lewin, our phot photographic artist in residence last year, will unveil her intimate dance portraits of Biennale Dancer 21, elucidating epic encounters with our recent past. Lewin, a bright light in a new generation of radical photographers, has always had bodies at the center of her practice. In this installation, she reframes the traditional dance photography landscape and focuses in to the prosaic, the everyday, exposing and illuminating the modern rituals of the dancer and the dance in their raw vulnerability and ecstatic release. If our live and installation program is the heart of our Biennale Dancer, the Biennale College is absolutely our blood supply. What then of the future art makers, the visionaries of tomorrow? Our newly minted Biennale College Dancer was a highlight of 2021, with superb young artists growing exponentially during three intensive months with us in Venice. For 2022, we will refine and sharpen our model to provide unparalleled learning, training, mentoring, and creating opportunities for a fresh cohort of burgeoning young talent. 18 young dancers and choreographers from around the world will be resident at the Biennale Dancer, taking class, workshops, rep, and creating new works with a plethora of professional artists and visionaries. This will include participating in an AI residency with me, built on my company work, which has been undertaken with Google, on developing a new machine learning tool for choreography. In a special commission this year, our golden lion, Saburo Teshigawara, will be in residence in Venice to collaborate with the college participants on a bespoke site-specific event within the Arsenale. It's a rare privilege for us to welcome this great dance master to work with the college in what will be, I'm sure for them, an early career highlight. And we're very much looking forward to sharing the outcomes of this unique experience with our Biennale audiences, cementing the Biennale College's reputation as a laboratory for dance experimentation. Last summer, we reminded our audiences of the collaborative power of dance 
with projects that enlivened and interacted with sites in the Architecture Biennale and appeared informally for audiences to encounter accidentally. Our collaboration with the Biennale Archive to celebrate Ishmael Evo was a special highlight, and a new collaboration with the Archive is planned for this season. In September 1972, the bold experimenter Merce Cunningham staged a seminal dance event at Piazza St. Marco during the 35th International Music Biennale. 50 years later, we pay tribute, celebrate, and evolve his pioneering legacy with a collaboration between the Biennale Archive, Biennale College, and the Cunningham Trust. Atomizing the original Cunningham event and creating a processional site-specific performance of Cunningham's work on and beside the canal, repertory from the iconic site St. Mark's work will be taught, rehearsed, and redistributed by Jeannie Steele and Daniel Squire, two seminal dancers of the Merce Cunningham Company and performed by the 16 dancers of the Biennale College. The Cunningham Atoms will be danced on floating stages and journey through key locations to sail into the Arsenale, where an outdoor 45-minute Cunningham event will emerge. Extending this spirit of collaboration, we will offer a rare opportunity to see Cunningham's last collaboration on film with the celebrated British visual artist Tasta Dean, Craneway event. In installation form, Dean's Craneway event offers a film portrait of the late Merce Cunningham as he leads his dancers in three days of rehearsal for another of his dance events in the former Ford Assembly Plant in Richmond, California. Completed just months after Cunningham's passing, Craneway event is a poetic homage to the avant-garde master. Indeed, dance on or in film is an important and revelatory part of our program again and continues to represent a powerful artistic and social force. From thrilling new forms of animation to intimate documentaries, the range and breadth of work is astonishing. Biennale Dancer 2022 will profile film work for the festival artists, major releases from established makers, as well as raw experimental visions. Curated conversations and discussion opportunities to meet artists and to understand more personally their work and their artistic vision this depth of interaction is central to our festival each year and a reflection of our commitment to widening access to the incredible talent and experience we have invited to Biennale. We will be continuing the In Conversation mentoring program through the Biennale Archive Writers in Residence program, nurturing a new group of young dance journalists and curators and providing them with unparalleled opportunities to practice their craft in real world public situations. Our workshop and masterclass program gives members of the public and dancers of a range of abilities opportunities to work physically in the studio with festival artists. Through sharing their technical repertory and creative practice, body to body, we hope to stimulate, challenge and engage. Each artist performing or presenting work in the Biennale Dancer will offer a workshop for a broad range of participants during the festival. The workshop program allows a diverse audience of professional and non-professional dancers to experience live the incredible physical worlds of our Biennale talent and in, to enjoy the power of dance in action. In actively supporting our new generation of dance makers, Biennale College will continue the two commissioning programs aimed at nurturing emerging work for the future. The first dedicates resources to the Silver Lion. The second in the form of a commission awarded to an Italian dance maker to include financial and artistic support, as well as a commitment to present the commissioned work in the subsequent Biennale. Applications for 2023 will open later this year. Please look out for that. And finally, I would just like to thank Patega Veneta for once again supporting our vision and programme for Biennale Dancer 22. Not only in the championing and advocacy for the work of the incredible artists around the world that we invite to Venice, but equally, for the creative dialogue and collaboration we've been able to share in realising our own artistic projects together. It's a real pleasure to work towards something greater. And I would just like to thank the whole Biennale team at this moment for their tireless work in creating this programme. Our boundaryless Biennale invites you to experience dance, 
dancers, choreographers, composers and artists who are truly threshold disruptors. They choose to operate in the liminal spaces of the in-between, in collaborations that are, un are unexpected, often provocative and profound. Biennale Dancer 22 welcomes you into their startling worlds. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. And uh, we now give the floor to Lucia Ronchetti, who is uh, the director of uh, the music uh, sector and video uh, first. And I invite uh, Lucia to join us. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everybody. The video you have uh, just uh, seen has been realized uh, by Lucio Schiavone, who is a Venetian, and uh, it has uh, been uh, the result uh, of uh, a collaboration with uh, uh, Magoga, and uh, um, the music is uh, by Battistelli. Out of stage uh, is uh, dedicated to to experimental music theater, and uh, it is uh, uh, highly diversified uh, uh, styles, uh, characterized by highly diversified styles uh, and composition techniques and technologies. We shall have uh, uh, an absolute avant premiere of uh, musical uh, theaters with uh, uh, performers who uh, first uh, are, uh, who are on stage for the first time in Italy. And uh, uh, there, um, uh, we shall have also uh, exhibition by the performers who have been selected in the framework of Biennale College, and uh, uh, we shall uh, stage Juban by our Golden Lion um, Battistelli, and uh, we shall um, have uh, different uh, performers. Uh, uh, that is to say, Ars Ludi, the Silver Lion of uh, the Biennale, and they will live in the larger sound of sets as uh, part of the stage uh, designed by uh, uh, Battistelli. Uh, in the stage designed by Angelo Linsalata. And uh, this uh, project uh, will be the inaugural uh, show of uh, our festival at Teatro La Fenice. We shall have uh, George, Mauricio Kagel and Georgia Apergi's uh, works, uh, and uh, also, uh, also a composer recognized uh, in Europe, such as uh, Carola Baucold and uh, Francois uh, Sarah. And then uh, we shall have a sleep laboratory by Alexander Schubert, uh, a work uh, um, uh, for ensemble and uh, um, virtual reality. And uh, the um, audience uh, will be on uh, 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 individual compartments uh, on courts wearing uh, VR headsets. Uh, 
and uh, um, we shall have a first uh, uh, interpolation uh, between uh, the uh, between the sleep and uh, um, and uh, uh, other stages that we shall have then have Simon Steen Anderson, a Danish composer uh, who is based in Berlin and uh, who is one of the most widely acknowledged voices in the post kagelian experimentation and uh, is uh, involved at the Veneto's ensemble, a, a Venetian ensemble directed by uh, Racanelli, formed by specialists of Baroque music, and that they all uh, try to um, uh, um, use quotation re-elaboration re of the original score in, uh, to tie into a reconnaissance of the sites on which the Teatro di San Cassiano and the Teatro di San Giov dei Santi Giovanni e Paolo, the first public theaters in Venice. And uh, uh, we shall then have Elena Tulva, the Estonian composer who continues Arvo Perth's experimentation in a uh, composition within the field of liturgical vocal music, uh, who uh, presents the creation of a new form of contemporary sacra representazione um, and uh, based on the musical uh, manuscripts, uh, uh, medieval uh, musical manuscripts uh, that were found by Giulio Cattini in the library of Santa Maria della Fava. So she is a contemporary uh, composer who works on medieval uh, um, pieces um, and uh, Vox Clementis uh, with uh, the historical uh, chorus of uh, uh, the Basilica di San Marco, that is uh, to say the Cappella Marciana, uh, will uh, perform uh, in uh, this uh, context uh, along with uh, the um, students of uh, the music Conservatory of uh, Venice, they will uh, create uh, um, new plays of uh, diffusion of uh, sound, and the basilica will uh, be the place where death and resurrection is uh, uh, becomes the uh, laboratory of acoustic uh, experimentation on sound diffusion, as it was in the 16th century. Um, uh, Calabretto, Roberto Calabretto is the scientific director of the Fondazione Ugo and Olga Levi uh, with the participation of Elena Tulve and the conductor, uh, conductor uh, Erle and musicologist Lovato will organize a, a round table. And uh, uh, also remembering uh, the uh, work made by Mario Messinis, who had uh, organized is a first concert of these fragments. And of course, Elena Tulve will participate since she is the first one who reproposes this type of theater. Then the Book of Water is the work proposed by the Dutch composer and director Michael van der Rohe in collaboration with uh, uh, Timothy West and uh, uh, his son, they will represent uh, the uh, character that emerges from a novel by Max Frisch and working on images, movements, and sounds of different environments. The composer will bring a theatrical vision of the Lagoon environment, uh, um, and it is uh, a site-specific uh, um, work uh, for one of of the most ancient theaters in Venice, the Teatro Goldoni, which was uh, founded by the Vendramins. And uh, Michel van der Rohe will allow the audience uh, to uh, experience the uh, um, uh, 
uh, the experience uh, that uh, uh, to, that had the audience uh, of the very first uh, opera performed at Teatro di San Cassiano in 1637, uh, Francesco Manelli's Andromeda, which opened with a scene of a nocturnal water landscape. Uh, and uh, in the libretto, uh, uh, we read that uh, it was the, the audience had the impression of uh, being really on the lagoon. Paolo Bonvino is a Sicilian composer, and he is uh, known for his uh, soundtracks. And he will uh, present uh, his uh, work based uh, uh, and inspired by the Sicilian and Mediterranean culture, that is to say, chateau, which means uh, brazo, and the Parco della Musica, directed uh, by um, um, uh, the uh, 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 the, 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 its uh, usual director will uh, conceive a, a state structure that will hold, protect, and host the audience of a chateau, inside which the musician will. Co create a collective uh, breathing exercise. Um, and then we shall have uh, Annelise van Paris, uh, a, a, a renowned Belgian composer and uh, um, and uh, uh, he is uh, uh, focusing uh, on. Uh, she is focusing on uh, uh, Claude Debussy unfinished uh, works, and but uh, for uh, um, uh, our uh, festival uh, uh, will focus for the Barca di Venezia per Padova, a uh, madrigal for five voices. It is a musical comedy in concert, and the travelers of this boat do not travel to. To nowhere. It is a virtual uh, travel. It is a multi ethnical population, as it was the case in Venice in the 17th century. And the composer provides uh, uh, different uh, uh, examples of national schools of that time. And uh, uh, with the Gaia shooters, uh, she adds uh, two um, uh, migrants, uh, two women uh, running away from uh, uh, war. So this travel is uh, multi-ethnical, multi-temporal, and uh, it is uh, in a, a collaboration with the Belgian Hermes Ensemble and uh, with the new vocal ensemble Venezia Eterna, which uh, is a Venetian ensemble founded by Francesco Erle. Then Andre Adamek, who is a composer, performer, and director, and uh, a very um, uh, renowned composer. Composer, um, and the Japanese composer Rino Murakami are uh, collaborating on a joint project. Uh, entitled uh, Reaching Out, uh, which uh, uh, speaks of the need of uh, pursuing uh, one's own uh, route, uh, and despite the obstacles uh, that are on our road, uh, even uh, though if these obstacles are the concentration camp of uh, Theresian Stad, where many family members of the composer were kept, and uh, even though it is a transversal route that has been built across the river that the salmons have to go up through. And this project is particularly interesting because the ensemble uh, is uh, uh, funded by Eric uh, Oberdorf and by Andre Adamek, uh, consisting of six voices, uh, two percussionists, and two dancers. Uh, the 10 participants of this ensemble are all um, percussionists, dancers, and voices. So they can create a complex uh, and organic uh, and uh, um, ensemble that overcomes uh, any uh, dichotomy existing between uh, the different skills of a musical theater. Other we shall have other important 
important projects that uh, derive from pop music, uh, from the composition, uh, uh, from compositional researches, uh, both academic and non-academic, uh, and uh, also based upon uh, the European tradition. And they present both composers and performers who uh, react against uh, any uh, lack of uh, acknowledgement of uh, rights and cancellation of uh, languages and uh, civilization. So uh, Mehdi Jalali, who is from uh, Tehran and is also the artistic uh, director of uh, the first uh, electronic uh, music festival uh, in uh, Tehran, presents Unfolding, which is a, an instrumental uh, theater project uh, within the framework of uh, a Persian uh, traditional uh, music. Uh, and um, the show will be presented at the uh, library, uh, the Marciana Library. And uh, we shall have uh, uh, some fervor uh, music uh, with uh, Yvette uh, Janinskon, who represents, uh, um, who represents the uh, African diaspora uh, music. Uh, and uh, her ensemble uh, is uh, more of a collective, uh, which is formed by black uh, American uh, form, uh, performers and musicians. And her project, uh, Left behind will focus on racial discrimination that have been enacted by American police. So then Klein, the Nigerian performer, pop singer based in London, and will present a new performance. And she will illustrate her interpretation of the vocal gesture. And then we shall have uh, the uh, American composer and producer of Taiwanese uh, origin, X Lee, with uh, uh, Daniele Carcassi, who will uh, present uh, Parallax, a, a project about uh, the phenomena of uh, uh, reality distortion, both uh, of that the, they met uh, during uh, the uh, college, uh, our uh, 2021 uh, college. Um, uh, it is a very important uh, project, uh, as well as uh, the uh, um uh, a project uh, presented by the Shanadash Conservatory. And uh, um, in this case, we shall speak uh, of a choral uh, dramaturge uh, with uh, uh, ethnical uh, percussions with Native Americans uh, um, players who will uh, illustrate, who will uh, present uh, a collective uh, memory which was almost lost apart from the music memory that is passed on. So these are American composers who have studied in um, uh, American uh, conservatories. Um, we then have, uh, we, uh, then have uh, Brent uh, Michael David who will uh, present uh, a new work uh, in speaking of uh, the uh, works of uh, the um, the tide of a river and uh, parallels uh, it with the Venetian situation. The Genale uh, um, Musica continues uh, its collaboration with the radio and uh, with uh, four episodes of uh, Lezioni di Musica uh, that will be broadcast from uh, this room. And uh, um, Giovanna Natalini will produce a cycle of audio documentaries for Tresoldi, which will inaugurate the Biennale College Musica. And then uh, the uh, um, 
A new radio opera will be broadcast from this room, and Giorgio Marini will continue his uh, uh, programming uh, projects of concerts uh, recorded uh, at the Biennale Musica. So the uh, comparison with uh, radios and uh, um, radio speakers, who are the most important speakers, uh, um, will include uh, BBC Radio 3, which uh, will produce uh, uh, a special uh, uh, edition of a program, new music show. Tom Solvis uh, will be in Venice, and he will um, uh, present uh, two concerts uh, of uh, uh, dedicated to instrumental theaters. And then... Uh, um, historians, uh, dramaturgists, uh, and uh, from all over the world will speak of the first uh, uh, decades uh, of uh, Venetian theater and in comparison with the uh, contemporary music theater that are uh, uh, presented uh, here in Venice thanks to the Biennale on the 25th of uh, September at the Fondazione Giorgio Cini in the Sala Brabantini, the Scientist scientific uh, director of the music department of the foundation with uh, Vincenzina Ottomane, a musicologist of the University of Venice, will coordinate a round table uh, with uh, um, extraordinary participants uh, from all over uh, the world. And the title is uh, uh, Today's Musical Theater, Voices, Actions, and and technologies, and then uh, Experimentum Mundi by Giorgio Battistelli will be performed on the last evening. It has uh, been uh, uh, executed all over the world 500 times, maybe, and with the participation of uh, 16 uh, artisans and, uh, and uh, a percussionist. And uh, they, um, we have received a very high level uh, submissions uh, from 41 countries. Uh, 300 uh, people submitted to their uh, candidature to participate in the college. The um, young people who have been uh, selected have uh, um, are already working and uh, uh, they will uh, be the uh, most uh, important part of our uh, production so we shall have Timothy Cape Daniel Posenefer Gemma Ragues Tania Cortez uh, uh, who is uh, um, from Ecuador Jacopo Cenni who is a composer of electronic music Catherine Vett who is from New York, Daphne Paris, uh, an art, a Dutch artist uh, who has uh, Indonesian and Italian origins, uh, Federico Tramontana, percussionist, uh, and Esther Elizabeth Rispens, a um, Belgian singer with uh, Paul Houtmeyer, who is uh, a composer, a German composer. He will produce an augmented reality song installation, the audience will not see anything, but they will notice uh, clouds, sound clouds in the space uh, that will be perceived only when crossing the rooms. So high level, uh, high technological level works uh, and poetical works will be presented. The, our catalog is not only a mirror of uh, our festival, it is also an autonomous uh, project that must witness and study the uh, situation of current music theater and uh, the current situation in general. And uh, it is uh, it has been published by Nero, a Rome-based publisher. And uh, Lucio Schiavon uh, is, uh, has illustrated it. And uh, Reste Bossini has curated our catalog. There will be a very uh, important uh, uh, contribution by international scholars. And uh, uh, studio headline, the Rovereto based headline studio has uh, designed the image of the festival. And I would like to thank the uh, Biennale 
esteem uh, uh, for what they have done so far. And uh, I wish to uh, thank also the president, uh, Mr. Chikuto, for his enlightened uh, management and his renewed support. And uh, I um, wish uh, you uh, have a look at the uh, schedule, at the program that has been curated uh, uh, by Emanuela Caldirola. And I warmly invite you all to participate in this festival. So we've listened to the different programs of dance, music, and theater. I cannot but thank the directors for their extraordinary work. We understand that we only were prepared to hundreds of what they uh, are about to bring to the fore. I'd like to thank all the Biennale team, all those who over the last two years have worked seamlessly, la smiling all the time despite wearing a mask. And we hope that we can get to see them all soon. I'd like to remind you the data um, dancer between in July music in September thank you very much to you all and we look forward to meeting you